Hi, I'm Dwayne Dennison for LessonFace.com, and we're going to do a lesson today that's a little different. Uh, we're not going to worry about necessarily about notes and chords and theory or anything like that, and we're going to um, instead concentrate more on, shall we say, sonic exploration of the guitar. And in particular, we're going to come at it from the angle of what's become known as prepared guitar. Um, the concept of preparing instruments comes from the American composer John Cage back in the 50s, and he began by writing a series of pieces for prepared piano, where they would take a grand piano and put objects, found objects, hardware things, etc., various apparatus in between and on and over and under the strings, producing all sorts of interesting sort of sonic effects and percussive effects and changing the sound of the instrument without relying upon electronics or, or other things like that. So it wasn't long after that that people began applying that to other instruments. And one of them, of course, the guitar. Being a stringed instrument, it lends itself quite well to that. So um, today I'm just going to show you a couple of basic things that you can do that I've done over the years, and um, we'll see what you think. All right, first off, we're going to do a guitar preparation with a very basic twist tie. Um, this is a plastic one, but you can use uh, also the ones that have like a metal wire that run through it, say from a garbage bag or whatever. And what I find works is to thread it between the strings. Um, typically, I do an over-under technique where I start under the, the bottom string, the sixth, go over the fifth, under the fourth, over the third, under the second, and over the top E string. So you've kind of, um, you're kind of weaving it between the strings. And then what happens is anything from there down is affected by the preparation. And you get a very metallic clanging sound. Uh, you can also have a very percussive sound. Kind of cool, right? And you can really go wild with it. And if you turn up your volume and add some distortion and effects, there's all kinds of things you can do. And keep in mind, too, that anything played above it sounds relatively normal. Whereas anything under it sounds not normal. So at that point, the guitar becomes really part of the percussion section and not really a melodic lead instrument. And that's kind of a nice place to be uh, sometimes for a change of, kind of a change of pace. This next thing we're going to do is what I call the snare guitar. And we don't have to put any objects in or on the strings for this, but we're going to manipulate the strings manually. And um, this was actually shown to me years ago by a flamenco guitarist named Juan Serrano who used to give lessons in Detroit, Michigan, uh, when I was in high school. And it, um, it made quite an impression on me, and, I, and I've uh, used it a few times in recordings over the years. And um, here's how it works. You're basically just creating a snare on usually the bottom two strings, but really you can do it on any two. But here's how it works. You start off with your right hand, and you put your fingernail underneath the sixth string and grab onto the fifth string, the adjacent string above it. And then you flip the top, the low string over while keeping your finger, or fingernail in this case, wedged in the middle. So here, I'll do it again. The index finger goes underneath the six, pull it up slightly, grab on to the fifth string with your nail, and then flip the low string over the fifth string in a way like this. Now, keeping your finger in there, pull down to your desired fret. In this case, we're going to go to the seventh fret. And pull on, then you have to and hold on to it with that finger and hold on tight because it's you if you move you'll lose the snare. And so now what we've basically done, the strings are wound around each other, and we've created a snare, and it sounds like this. And if you play it muted, you get this kind of sound. If you play it open, obviously it's going to rattle and be a bit brighter. 
Now, while you've got that held, you can kind of move your fingers around a little bit on that string and kind of get a change of pitch. Listen, listen what happens. <laughs> That's kind of neat, isn't it? Um, while you're holding this here, you can also, if you want, let's try, let's get the fourth and third and create a snare there at the same time. Okay, now I've got this next to each other. Now I can do something, say, a little more choppy and kind of alternate between the two. Interesting, right? It's it's I, I don't know how I would describe that sound. It's uh, it's a very earthy, primitive sort of thing. But um, once again, I'm playing completely clean through an amp, so with with effects and distortion, there's no telling where you might go. Okay, I'm going to let go of this, and you can see it. It takes a little effort. Um, you can also do it on the top strings. I don't think it sounds quite as great. It sounds more like a mistake. Um, in fact, people might think that you're making a mistake already by, by doing this. I, I've actually thrown this in during jam sessions and had people go ask me if there was something wrong with my guitar. Um, you can tell them, no, I'm playing snare guitar, and it was shown to me by Dwayne Dennison. All right, let's do another setup with this, and this one's going to be a little different. I'm going to start on the third and fourth and pull the fourth string around the third one, and let's go down to the fifth fret and hold it there. At the same time, I'm going to do a wrap around here and then go to the eighth fret here. So now the little finger is actually on the other side. They're, they're different than they were, and you get this kind of. It never sounds exactly the same way twice. It's an interesting thing. The same with the, um, the prepared guitar twist tie thing. Depending on what type of material you're using, how you thread it, you don't have to thread it the same way either. You don't have to always go under over. You can go over under or, or whatever. Um, there's an element of chance to it that I, I think conceptually is interesting. The fact that it's not precise and it's not perfect and it's not going to be the same every time is part of what makes it interesting and therefore like, well, life itself. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. Have fun with this stuff and I'll see you next time.